Yeah. And see, and that's the second question that comes to my mind is that if they can do this to some guy for no other reason than that he, somebody mentioned him in a conversation, then really, who of us is safe? Who of us it has any kind of reasonable expectation of being safe and secure in our person's papers and effects? Wait a second. Is that sounding familiar at all to anyone? Yeah, that was trash in the Patriot Act. Well, the, I mean, the, the Fourth Amendment to the, to the U.S. Constitution is identical, literally word for word, to, to, the, the, state to the state constitution. But in, in the state constitution, we put it, instead of at, at, at the end as some kind of amendment, we put it right there in, what is it, Article 1, in the, the section talking about the Declaration of Rights, that we are supposed to be able to, in uh, Section 14 of Article 1, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, and other property, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. No warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. If if none of us has an expectation that that's going to be followed, really, does this government have any legitimacy at all? Or are we just living under tyranny? Uh, are we supposed to look at the evidence, or is that a hypothetical? Well, it's it's not. It's really not a rhetorical question. I mean, it it, it really is something that is occurring to me because what did it take for our founding fathers? to get to the point where they were, uh, well, revolutionary, I guess, is the best term term for it, where they finally decided enough is enough, it's time for us to throw off the yokes of this this unrighteous, illegitimate government. I mean, it took a couple of decades, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, we, we had yeah. uh, a number of the different acts uh, leading up to it. Actually, they were all repealed before the war. Yeah. So you're going back to the 1750s up through um, the 1770s before it finally uh, boiled over. But the main issue it was the actual flashpoint is they were coming to get the guns, right? Yeah. Is that what it's going to take? Well, it's what uh, Lexington... What it's going to take is what it always takes. Everybody has to be afflicted before anybody will do anything. Because as long as it's not everybody, we'll let all the Jews die. <laughs> yeah. As long as they don't come for me. Yeah, right. Exactly. Until they haul everyone off and you're the only one left. Then who do you have to turn to? And then you're, you're Is Mike off. Jewish? No. no. No, I was just checking. <laughs> well, you know, this is... <laughs> Not in the classical sense. <laughs> we haven't we haven't given out the phone number. If anybody would like to, to call out and uh, be a part of the show, the number is 458-TALK, 458-8255. So on a, on a very serious note, I, what can we do, Josh? Well, who, can, who can we call? Who can we write an email to? What can I, are we supposed to get, get out a uh, a placard and go protest somewhere? I mean, what can we do? I guess one thing we could do is the next time they have a hearing is we show up. I've gone and there's two people there. I mean, mostly it's just for the most of them are just uh, reporters too. I just want a good story to feed the masses. I mean, until we take it seriously that someone's liberty is being violated. Nothing will happen until enough people decide that someone's liberty is being violated and that violation also violates them. Until you realize that your neighbor is as important as you are, and the stuff will just keep happening. Nothing will happen. I mean, what can we do? Well, we decided today one thing we could do is to talk about it, get people to think about it. Maybe someone, maybe a prosecutor is listening. Let him go. Let the guy go. Do something right for once. Maybe the judge is listening, or somebody will tell him, hey, let's, you ought to hear what these guys said. Well, Mr. Judge, let the guy go. Do something right. Follow your pledge, your oath to the Constitution of the United States. Do something right. Well, didn't the judge just toss out all the charges against racial, uh, what's her name, Barney? Barney, yep. Tossed them all out for lack of evidence. Same, same kind of thing, where she had been hauled in for, uh, I think the charges against her were for aiding and abetting a felon or something. Yeah. Because because basically she allowed Schaefer Cox to stay in her home, and the judge is looking at the evidence, and it's like, well, look, even the crimes that Schaefer Cox is accused of did not even happen until after the point in which he was living in their home. So how can you charge someone with a crime for helping to commit crimes that hadn't been committed? 
unless, of course, we're going down this this minority report road where you can arrest people and charge people and punish people for things that they haven't yet done because they might do them. Isn't that the precedence for all of the regulatory and statute and code law? There is a certain presumption of guilt. That is true. You are going to violate, so we're going to make sure you can't. Yeah, we're going we're going to make it so that we're going to tighten it up so much that uh, only only those who really 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 want to violate. Oh wait, no, we're going to tighten it up so that just about everybody violates even accidentally. George Washington is obviously an idiot when he said that uh, <laughs> it'd be unwise and unjust jealousy to deprive a man of his liberties on the supposition he would abuse it. What's that? Well, I don't know. Those guys must have been idiots. I mean, all I can say is that they were either fools and didn't know what the heck they were talking about and fought for nothing, or we are fools. And I'm going to go with them. Yeah, they, obviously. I mean, we, they, they lived so long ago. I mean, they didn't even have TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It must have been stupid. All right, 458 Dog, the number. Shall we open up to the phone lines? Yeah. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. This is Brian. Brian, what's on your mind today? Oh, uh, we're. Were either one of you guys at the uh, Denny's court? No. No. Well, if you'd have gone to that, I think it's pretty obvious that the local police set Schaefer up to start with, with that, with the concealed carry. He didn't, he, where he didn't supposedly didn't show him the gun quick enough. Yeah. Well, there was there was a couple of witnesses that witnessed that whole thing and said he absolutely did do that. So that's part of the setup. And then they got the guy down there that was in trouble in Wasilla, oh, somebody. And then they get him and tell him, well, we're going to let you off if you if you testify against Schaefer. And then, and then he's the one that came up with the, this is my theory, he's the one that came up with the, uh, we're going to shoot the, the, the two for one the plan. Judge. What? Yeah, the two-for-one plan. Absolutely he did. He's the one. Yeah. The, in and so then now they the, don't want Schaefer Cox out of jail, you know. He, no. They want him to kind of go away and be in jail for a long time and then, shut him up and who knows what they're doing to him in there what are they feeding him you know they're feeding him some some kind of drug that will scramble him or whatever but there's a there's going to be a investigation into all of this and i'm supposed to go and uh, and i and i know one of the judges and i'm supposed to go and tell my part of it which i know and he was sitting in my living room Schaefer was in my living room about thanksgiving time Worried that this was going to happen. That worried that these people were going to get mad and it was going to get out of like, like get out of his control, and that he was going to. He wanted me to go talk to one judge that I've known for many years, and I did. And he went and saw Schaefer went and saw him and talked to him. So this is all. I I'm going to help it come out because this guy is not guilty. You know, we got the we got the enemy in the White House and we got the Patriots in the jail. Well, I, you know what? I don't don't just limit it to the White House, brother. I, in fact, well, I, mean, I think the White House the White is only House, a symptom I mean, of what, what we've got going on. I mean, you look at Congress right now, and it's the same people have been advancing these same programs well, for know, the last I mean, two decades. I, well, I mean, he's he's just the uh, it's just become more obvious now with this guy in there in the White House. I think what's going on. But all right, appreciate the call. We got to come up on a break here, real quick. Fox News on the way, and we'll be right back with more. Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Number to call is 458-TALK, 458-8255 to get on the line or join us in the chat room, KFAR660.com. You've got it on the home for Fox News in Fairbanks, KFAR. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. Four people now killed in flash flooding in Pittsburgh. A mother and two daughters pinned in their car as the water rose and a woman whose body was just found. This woman was rescued. The next thing I know, the water is up to the middle of my door and you just see, you started to see a red dump truck floating. The water got up to nine feet high. Iranian TV reports a sentence for two American hikers, Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal, accused of spying and illegally entering Iran. Fox's Julie Banderas with State Department reaction. They are trying to work to confirm these reports about the eight-year sentence, and it has repeatedly called for the release of the two men, adding that Shane and Josh have been imprisoned too long, and it is time to reunite them with their families. They were arrested in June of 09. Verizon strikers agree to go back to work Tuesday while negotiations continue. Fox News. We report. You decide. <laughs> 
Talk Radio, KFAR, with a clear perspective on what's going on in the world, whether it's overseas or down your street. Tune in for the latest developments anytime, day or night, 660 AM, KFAR. You have got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, brought to you in part by Bighorn Enterprises for all your trucking and construction needs. Call 451-7310. Also brought to you by Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey, providing you with an opportunity to defend yourself. You know, if you uh, if you believe that the police are going to be there when you need them and all you need to do is call 911 and wait in the bathroom, well, then don't go to Far North Tactical because they can't help you. You can't fix stupid. However, they can uh, help you over there with firearms, uh, body armor, backpacks, medical supplies. Basically, uh, bring your checkbook, your credit card, some cash, and get ready to shop over there at Far North Tactical, the old Blondie's building. All right, gentlemen, we've got all four lines on hold. Joining me in the studio, we've got Dave Giesel from the Campaign for Liberty. We've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical, and we've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Gentlemen, back to the phones. Yeah. Yep. Four five eight. Talk. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, good morning. You got Al Brett from Fairbanks Fur Tannery. Hey, hey Al. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys are on this subject this morning about losing constitutional rights and freedoms. Um, currently, we're in a dispute with uh, law enforcement on on and search and seizures in our taxidermy businesses. And what was really we had a meeting here about a week ago with the the commissioner, the top cop, Joe Banks and two of his lieutenants. And uh, the commissioner pointed out that, one, we we argued on a constitutional issue that, you know, you can't come in and just search our shops or our paperwork. And so he's, you know, admitted that, you know, he didn't believe in the Constitution because we had a, a memorandum from legislative legal and said there was constitutional problems with doing that. And second thing that was pointed out is, they don't like the Constitution because it's too hard to work around to get a search warrant to do proper police work and do a proper search of a taxidermy shop that may be in violation of something. Another part of that, too, don't they basically want uh, you as a taxidermist or any other taxidermist to be their eyes and ears for them? To turn well, people yeah, and in? that's the, you know, when they first uh, proposed to the Board of Game, they wanted to have free and and unobstructed access to all taxidermy shops and everything in their possession. And so that's when we immediately went to our legislature and we got this opinion from legislative legal that said, yes, there is constitutional problems with that. And uh, so we thought we had them, but what they did then was they came back and said, we'll provide you a logbook. And on that logbook, we want all your customers' information and what they did and what they brought in. And in, so, in reality, what happens then is that property is no longer, that's not yours, it's the state of Alaska. So, they can come and inspect their property, their logbook, and any information on that logbook is their information. What if you don't use their logbook? <clears throat> well, and see what they're, here's where we go. You know, now you create a regulation that backdoors the Constitution. Kind of reminds me of Far North Tactical. If you come in and buy MREs or waterproof match cases, I've got to turn you into the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> it's regulatory creep. You know, you, you make regulations which are not supposed to happen. You know, and I'm pointing it out. You can't make a regulation that's unconstitutional, so we'll, we'll find all the loopholes. You know, lawyers are good at it. So the Constitution says you can't search your private property or your possessions without proper probable cause and a search warrant given by the judge. So we'll circumvent that by giving you state property to keep information on. Yeah, I mean, it's still the same thing. It's the same it's exact just, thing, same thing. I think you just have to, I mean, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Al, but really it comes down to whether we allow them to do it. I mean, I guess you could just not accept it. Then I suppose they'll fine you or try to throw you out of business. No, right? exactly. 